This is the Pythonic Accountant, and today I'm going to show you some of the really cool new features around creating your own custom GPTs. This is available now for anyone who has GPT, ChatGPT Plus, and what you can do is you can see on the left I've got all of these really cool uh, custom GPTs that I built, and you can also access GPTs that were built by the uh, OpenAI themselves. Some of these are ones that you probably already use, like the DALI and data analysis classic. Then they have a whole bunch of other ones that do, you know, very specific things like teaching you how to negotiate, uh, tech support advisor, things like that. And so I've started playing around coming up with some really interesting ones. Some of them are really funny. Um, I like one that's called photo dystopify, which converts a traditional image into like a dystopian art. That one's kind of cool. Uh, I've got some accounting focused ones. But today, um, I'm going to first show you just a really fun one that I made <laughs> called Clippy. And then I'll show you how to build a new one. So this one's fun. This one is supposed to act like Clippy, the old Microsoft Assistant. And basically, you can ask it anything you want, and it will respond just with an image of Clippy. And it's going to have a speech bubble uh, from Clippy as well. And so what's cool is it already knows that the way it's supposed to behave is to respond with that image and with a speech bubble because I gave it those instructions. And so what it's gonna do now is all I have to do is type whatever I want, ask it a question, ask it for advice about something, and then it'll give me back that image of the response. <laughs> There's Clippy. Uh, it's not the original Clippy per se, but it's a pretty close approximation. So I'm just a virtual assistant, but I'm always here for to assist you today. <laughs> It doesn't always have correct grammar or the correct spelling because the uh, words from these images are still not perfect, but still pretty awesome compared to how they used to be. Um, this is a bunch of other fun ones that uh, we could play around with, but I'd rather show you how to make a new one. So the way to do that is to go back to Explore, and we'll go and create a GPT. And so for fun, what I've done is I've downloaded the IRS publication 525 for 2022. And this one is all about uh, income, taxable and non-taxable income. So we're gonna see if we can pull it into use as a reference file and have it uh, answer questions about it. So I'm gonna say, I want a, a helper that answers tax questions specific to IRS Pub 525. And then I'm gonna upload the document. So we'll go to our downloads and click on the P525. And it's going to upload this PDF. And what's cool about the builder is we're building a new custom GPT, uh, but we're there's a configure tab I'll show you uh, next. But the way that this works is it's going to help us build the custom GPT by uploading this file and by typing this message I don't have to put in all the specifics into the configure tab. I just tell this GPT builder what I want, and it's going to kind of infer what I'm looking for and turn it into a very specific set of instructions. And so that's what it's doing now is it's converting, it's uploading this document into the configuration tab, and it's writing a description. It might even come up with a name for me and an image, and then it's going to allow me to kind of make modifications. So it suggested tax guide. I think that's not good enough. I think we want to say it like um, 2022 uh, taxable and non-taxable income guide. That might be too long, but we'll see what it comes up with. And then what it will probably do next is, ha, perfect. That's the choice. Now it's going to create a profile picture. So that's great. And you can see on the right, it's actually showing you a preview of what the GPT looks like. So this is the description that it gives it. Expert on IRS Publication 525, providing clear tax-related answers and guidance. <laughs> now it's given us a book, Taxable and Non-Taxable Guide. That's good enough. I love it. And um, now we've got a preview. So let's just take a look at the configuration tab and see what it came up with. So this it gives instructions on how it should respond and interact with the user. It says it's designed to assist with tax-related questions, especially those concerning this publication. It'll provide detailed answers, clarifications, guidance, blah, blah, blah. Um, it should avoid giving personalized tax advice or interpretations outside the scope of the document, so that's good. And then you can see here it has the document as a reference. 
Um, and what's cool is you can turn on or off some of these additional capabilities. So like we don't need web browsing, we don't need Dolly, and we don't need code interpreter in this case. So we're gonna leave those out. And the uh, actions, I don't have uh, any experience working with those yet. We might try those in a future video, but that allows you to interact with some other things outside of the application here itself, which is kind of cool. So um, we're gonna go ahead and try this out. And instead of doing it here, I'm gonna go ahead and do it in the main app. So I'm gonna make this public and hit confirm. And then what it should do is let me open this up and play with kind of a live version of it. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna take it for a spin. Maybe first I'll say like, um, how do I know when I have taxable versus non-taxable? What even is non-taxable income? So, <laughs> you know, pretty generic question, but you know, it's a complex guide with a lot of pages. Let's see what sort of summarized response it'll give me here. And then we can dig into a few other questions that we can try asking it. Now, it sometimes will take a little while to respond to these questions because it's a large file that it is processing and pulling from, um, but it looks like it didn't take too long here. So let's see what it gives us for a response. It says income can come in various forms, including money, property, or services, whether it's taxable or not taxable determined by specific laws. Um, most cases, income is taxable unless it's exempted, including money you earn, as well as income from investments, rental properties, other sources. It must be reported on your tax return. Non-taxable income is when it's due to specific laws, not subject to tax. And it doesn't, let's see, examples can include certain types of gifts, life insurance proceeds, welfare benefits, and specific types of employee benefits. Okay, cool. Now I'm going to give it a scenario. I'm not going to use the word barter, but I'm going to help, I'm going to, you know, hope that it will infer that it's a barter and going to see if there is, um, if it's smart enough to kind of figure out the tax impact on it. So uh, let's say I trade uh, my friend. spell it correctly. Say so I tried my friend, my uh, valuable Magic the Gathering <laughs> card set for his uh, new, let's see, remote controlled uh, airplane. Is there any taxable income to me on this? We'll see what it says. Because I'm not getting any money, but I'm getting something of value here. So the idea would be it probably should be income depending on if I had any increase from the original cost. All right, so it says it's barter, so that's good. Exchange of property or services and is a taxable transaction, that's right. You must include in your income, the fair market value of what you receive at the time of the exchange. So in your case, the fair market value of the remote control airplane. That's right. This is true even though no money changes in the exchange. Generally, income from barter is reported on Schedule C. However, if the barter involves an exchange of something other than services, you may use another form or schedule. So what's interesting is if I trade something that has the same value, I would have to report this fair market value um, and so <clears throat> I guess that's considered income because it's the same thing as if I received cash for it instead. But I would not have to get pay taxes on the full amount probably, just like if I sold something else that I had paid for. So what amount would I pay taxes on in this scenario? How do I determine that? Let's see if it's able to figure this out. So I'm hoping that it will say something around. It depends on what I current, uh, originally paid for the Magic the Gathering cards. So the amount you pay tax on is determined by the fair market value of the remote controlled airplane you received. Fair market value, blah, blah, blah. It's the price at a willing buyer. Okay, that's fine. You can assess the fair market value. And okay, so I think it might be missing something here. I'm curious to see what it says in this guide here. What talks about bartering. Um, but I mean, for my, you know, for what I remember doing taxes, 
is you have to subtract your basis, which is how much you paid basically um, in the original item that you bought. Uh, let's see if it says anything specifically about it on here. Maybe not, but let's ask it. Let's say, um, uh, wouldn't, wouldn't I only pay tax on the amount, the fair market value of what I receive is above what I originally paid for the cards? Magic cards. And so hopefully it's going to reference the document here versus make something up. And this says the situation you're describing pertains to calculating gain or loss for purposes of capital gains tax, which typically applies to sale of assets. When you barter, the entire fair market value of the property or services you receive is considered taxable income, regardless of your original cost or basis in the item of exchange. Oh, that is interesting. So in your example, you report the full fair market value of the remote controlled airplane as income, not just the excess over what you originally paid. The approach is in line with the general principle of income taxation where the focus is on the value of what you receive rather than what you give up or you gain. Interesting. I don't know if that's fully correct, but hey, let's see if you uh, listeners have any better information about how you're supposed to report taxes on barter versus not. Well, that's all I've got for you on today's uh, edition, but hopefully you stick around and see more experimenting with all of these fun little GPTs. And please uh, leave any comments you have about the proper way to report <laughs> bartering transactions, as well as if you have any other suggestions on where we should go next with these GPTs. Thank you, and we'll see you at the next one.